Hi, Dr. Kat Fleece from Central New Mexico Community College. In video G, we're going to quickly review the various hormones that regulate the ovarian and uterine cycle with the help of some different images. Here then we see the images we're pretty familiar with from the previous video. So at the top here we see the maturation of the follicles, so folliculogenesis to the graphion follicle. Here then we see the three phases that occur in the ovary, the follicular phase, ovulation, and the luteal phase, and how that relates to the three phases in the uterus. The first few days of the menstrual cycle we have the menses, or menstruation, then we have the proliferative phase when the endometrium starts to build up, and then we have the secretory phase when the endometrium basically matures, followed here by the various hormones that we studied and that we'll take a closer look at again in the next slides. So on day one, or at the start of the cycle, the hypothalamus is going to increase its levels of gonadotropin, and this is going to trigger our anterior pituitary to secrete follicle-stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, both hormones that will stimulate the ovaries to um, mature some of its follicles. As these follicles begin to mature, then they produce estrogens. These estrogens can help the uterus to start forming the endometrium, but as the estrogen levels begin to rise slowly but surely, they actually feed back to the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus to inhibit further release of their hormones. As our follicles continue to mature, eventually one of them will become the mature follicle, as in the graphion follicle, and produce so much estrogen that this amount of estrogen, again, we're using estradiol here for our form of estrogen, will actually feed back to the hypothalamus and um, therefore have a positive impact to where the anterior pituitary is now going to be triggered to release all of this FSH and LH that it actually continued to collect and store while um, FSH and LH was blocked for a while by slow increasing levels of estrogen. So when we have this high level of estrogen because we've reached that graphion follicle, we see a positive feedback mechanism. And this is what then ultimately leads to the LH surge or LH peak, and of course that results in ovulation. After ovulation, the corpus luteum is formed so that we can start the luteal phase. And during the luteal phase, the corpus luteum is going to produce estrogen inhibin, but especially progesterone. Progesterone, of course, is going to help with preparing the, the uterus for the possible arrival of an embryo. And the progesterone will also feed back to the anterior pituitary and the hypothalamus um, to where, and this should be corrected, no more FSH and LH is being released. So Estrogen, progesterone, and, and inhibin have a negative impact on further release of FSH and LH. If fertilization does not occur, the corpus luteum starts to deteriorate, and then we see that the corpus luteum cannot inhibit the anterior pituitary and hypothalamus anymore, and then these plus signs would make sense because LH and FSH would then stimulate the production of new follicles again. So this video was just a very quick review with some different diagrams of hormonal regulation of the ovarian and uterine cycle.